What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we have some news from Bungie in the form of This Week at Bungie, and they talk about quite a lot of stuff. So first up, we have a reveal for The Dawning, new information about how the event is going to work, some of the rewards, and words about updates next week. On top of this, we have a new trailer, and this is for The Scourge of the Pastry launching tomorrow. Bungie talk a little bit more about that, some changes to power ammo that they'll be bringing into the Crucible, as well as a conversation about a bunch of different sandbox elements, things like Telesto. The weapon is going to see some changes. They also speak about Nova Warp and some of the other pretty strong stuff in the game right now. Bungie talk about new updates dropping in the game over the next couple of weeks, a new forge that is launching, and a bunch of other stuff that we'll break down in this video, guys. So I hope you do find it useful, but now let's jump straight into it. So let's talk about the Dawning 2018 right here. First up, Bungie say Eva Levante is of course returning for the Dawning event. And we get a nice festive image of old Eva hanging out in the tower right there. But Bungie say Eva has returned to the tower and brought her baking supplies with her. All players of Destiny 2 are invited to join the celebration. She will provide the oven and some ingredients to get you started, but you'll need to go out into the world, gather more ingredients by defeating enemies and completing various activities in Destiny 2. Once you have your ingredients, you can start combining them to create some tasty treats like Gala Doodles or chocolate chip cookies. We'll give you a few recipes to get started, but it's up to you to try different combinations and discover which ones turn into the most delicious cookies. Be careful, mismatched ingredients result in burnt edges. And Bungie say you might be asking, what do I get for all of these cookies? Friends you've made throughout the solar system are eager to receive your baked goods as gifts. They will show their thanks by rewarding you in their own ways. There will also be bounties to complete along with your cookbook. And here's a preview of the rewards you'll have a chance to earn. So enhance cores, as well as mods, legendary gear, and the avalanche heavy machine gun featuring random rolls. So we can see the machine gun right here, and I guess as you turn these bounties in or bake these goods, you will actually have chances to get these things dropped. But they say that's not all you'll earn while you celebrate the dawning. As you gather ingredients and bake items, you will also progress towards unlocking this festive new sparrow. And of course, here is the dawning sparrow. The new ride will come equipped with some very special perks. While boosting, the sparrow spawns a glimmer present every few seconds, and this is until the boost runs out, Glimmer Presence burst open after a moment so that players can acquire the Glimmer, and this is only active during the dawning. On top of this though, when a player lands a trick with the Sparrow, 3-5 to five Glimmer Presence are spawned, once again only active in the dawning, and it does have Instant Summon as well, which reduces the Sparrow spawn time significantly. On top of this, there will be new triumphs for the dawning, but Bungie show us some of the loot right here. So during the dawning, we're continuing the tradition of double Engram drops. All players who are at max level, depending on what content they own, will receive both a Bright Engram and a Dawning Engram on every level up. There will once again be a knockout list on the Dawning Engram, so it means once you've had an item dropped, you won't get it dropped again, and so technically if you play enough, you could actually receive all of the items for the Dawning. But they show us a new ship right here. This is called Glad Tidings. We can see it in the database. There is also the new Ghost Shell, and this is the Hard Packed Shell. There are new multiplayer emotes, so we can see one right here. This is a high five emote, and when both players activate the emote at the same time, the game will actually synchronize them. There is also an Attitudal Throw Down emote that we can see right here here and Bungie say that there will be one exotic emote exclusive to a bundle available for direct purchase. And that is the one that you can see on the screen. On top of this, Tess will offer some of the ingredients in different packages in exchange for Bright Dust. But they say Eva's Holiday Oven does require Essence of Dawning, which can only be acquired by playing activities in the game. So even if you want to stock up on ingredients with extra Bright Dust, you still need to go out into the world to earn the fuel to fire up your oven. So the Dawning will run from December 11th, that's next week on the reset, up until January the 1st. So it is actually going to be running for a few weeks right there. And of course the Winter Drift Engram will be the new dawning Engram for this year. There are a few different cosmetic items. The Hard Pack Shell is probably the coolest one. There is the True North Shell as well. A couple of different ships and a bunch of legendary stuff as well as the new armor sets of course. This is a close up look at the Avalanche Heavy Machine Gun right here. It's adaptive frame so it's the same archetype as Hammerhead and Thunderlord. For the traits there are a bunch of different potential bonuses. So Under Pressure, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Slideways, Threat Detector, Moving Target, Feeding Frenzy, and then the second trait slot can get Rampage, High Impact Reserves, Quick Draw, Firmly Planted, Snapshot Sights, and Hip Fry Grip. On top of this, you can also get Masterwork versions of this weapon, of course. So it'll be interesting to grind out for it, and pretty cool visuals as well on the weapon, I think. But let me know your thoughts about the Dawning stuff right here down below in the comment section.
Now though, let's round up some of the stuff from this week at Bungie. Of course, Bungie did adjust the power level requirement for the Lost Forge in the European Dead Zone. And they say for some of you, the enemies guarding the Lost Forges are immune to your weapons. We promised more details for players who are still working their way to 600 and beyond. And here is what we have planned to help you move more quickly up to 600. So Prime Engrams will now drop more frequently and with larger power bumps for players under 600 power. And this change is intended to land in the 2.1.2 update on December 11th. They are also discussing future changes that they can make to assist with the power climb, so that's definitely worth bearing in mind. Next though, they talk about some sandbox stuff, specifically power ammo spawns inside of PvP. They say there have been numerous requests to lower the amount of power ammo spawning in competitive playlists, and based on this feedback, we will be lowering the amount of power ammo available during matches by increasing the time between power ammo spawns, and here are the details. So in competitive, for control, initial timers stay the same, but they've increased the respawn timer for heavy ammo from 45 seconds up to 120 seconds. This will be the same in Clash as well, but in survival, it will go from 45 seconds up to 60 seconds. In rotating playlists like Showdown, we'll also see a 60 second timer for heavy ammo and a 120 second timer in Rumble, once again up from 60 seconds. So essentially, there will be quite a bit less heavy generally inside of these playlists, and I don't necessarily think that is a bad thing whatsoever, but you'll have to let me know your thoughts about that down below. Josh Hamrick from the Bungie Sandbox team also jumps in to talk about a bunch of different elements in the game, and this includes things like an overwarp and Telesto that we mentioned a couple of moments ago. So Josh Hamrick says, instead of building up to one or two massive patches a year, we've transitioned into shipping smaller batches of changes much more frequently. We hope that this new approach will allow us to remain more agile than we've been in the past and allow us to shake up the meta a bit on more frequent intervals. So first up, he speaks about sniper rivals. He says snipers are definitely one of the archetypes we're actively looking at making changes to. For example, later in January, rapid fire snipers will be moving to a two shot body kill. Additionally, we are considering allowing more snipers to be able to one shot supers on headshots in a future patch. They also say they will be increasing the number of low zoom scope snipers in the game. But next he talks about Nova Warp and he says, yep, the Nova Warp Super is too dominant right now and we're planning to tweak it. It's currently slated to land with a patch coming in late January. They also say they are looking into melee consistency and hit detection for things like Sentinel. And they also say they have some planned buffs coming to older subclass paths in the upcoming patch. And again, this is the one coming in January. So they are considering buffing some of the older subclasses from year one. And they say on the subject of exotics like One-Eyed Mask, Shards of Galanor, they get talked about quite a bit inside of the studio, and Josh Hamrick says he expects that they will be looked at in the future. Now though, Telesto, he says late in January, you'll find that Telesto's bolts to kill will now match its charge rate, whereas previously doing more damage than other fusion rifles of its type. That said, due to it being affected less by damage fall off due to its explosive nature, it will still be more consistent than fusion rifles of the same charge rate. But on top of this, PVE damage will be increased to keep the parity there. The goal still being to buff where we can, but where we have to nerf, you're going to find us trying to inch down instead of going nuclear, at least as much as we can. So there is actually some kind of nerf coming to Telesto late in January. Primarily it will be a reduction in damage. So let me know what you think about that. Do you think that's a positive change? They say they are still looking at scout rifles in general, as well as SMGs, a buff to fusion rifles, including rapid fire fusion rifles. They do say that Wave Splitter isn't on the top of their list currently. And on the subject of Titan Skating, we'd like to fix this. However, we're being careful about how we do so because it's so closely tied to the core feel of the lift ability. In other words, we don't want a Titan Skating fix to change the way lift ability feels for all players. We'd love to have a simple fix to this issue we could roll out immediately, but this one is going to take us a while to land on something solid. So that's just a quick preview of some of the sandbox stuff that Bungie are looking at, as well as a brief preview of the changes that we'll actually see in January as well. Now that they talk about new content, of course, we did mention the dawning, and on Tuesday, alongside that, update 2.1.2 will go live. Bungie do reiterate that tomorrow, a new forge will become available, and this is the Gafanon Forge. On top of this, the Race for Worlds First will kick off in the Scourge of the Past raid. Before we take a quick look at the trailer for Scourge of the Past, Bungie do say they will be tracking the World First completion, and anyone who beats all of the encounters of this raid in the first 24 hours will be awarded the Scourge of Nothing emblem, and they do have that raid jacket once again. Here, Bungie did actually give us a teaser for the Scourge of the past read, so let's check it out in full. Remember this, Guardian. When the darkness sought destruction of all things, the Black Armory persevered. Our very soul resides in that vault. It must be secured. The Black Armory is depending on you.
Of course, throughout the trailer, we see the sparrows in action, which is pretty cool. So there'll be plenty of sparrow action in this raid. Guardians will be sent to uncover a long forgotten secret. And of course, this raid is in the city, which is pretty interesting. Once again, even more sparrow action. And you do get that Wrath of the Machine vibe. And right at the end, we see one of the fallen enemies that will feature in this raid. Definitely a very Siva look going on right there. There's been some speculation that Siva could feature in the raid in some way. But of course, Scourge of the Past will launch tomorrow on the 7th of December at the reset time, 9 a.m. PST, 5 p.m. in the UK. So good luck if you are jumping into the raid. Of course, Bungie also confirmed that the power requirement, or the recommended level at least, will be 640 power. So it's certainly going to be a pretty tough one again. We'll have to wait and see how this one turns out. For now though, guys, that is going to summarize today's video. So let me know your thoughts about this stuff down below. The dawning is certainly looking pretty interesting this time around. Good luck if you're jumping into the raid tomorrow, or indeed to the Gafan and Forge. I'll try and keep you guys posted with some content regarding that, but also let me know your opinions about some of those potential sandbox changes coming up in January. If you have enjoyed the video though, a like is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more D2 content. But for now, whatever you guys get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.